Sometimes two or more great business-related books can seem to offer up contradictory advice, and it's not always clear whether you should follow the advice from one book or from another, and that happens to be the case based on a comment I saw here on the YouTube channel between The Lean Startup and Zero to One, and the commenter pointed out that in many ways, Zero to One criticizes some of the ideas from The Lean Startup, and so it's not entirely clear which approach you should take when building your own startup business. So I thought this would be interesting to kind of dive into in a video where we can go into things in a little bit more detail as opposed to just replying to the comment. So let's quickly set the stage here. The Lean Startup by Eric Ries is a methodical approach for turning a startup idea into a sustainable business. So it's really focused around the idea of identifying the assumptions within your startup or business idea, getting clear on those assumptions, translating them into hypotheses, and then validating those hypotheses before investing further into the business. So rather than just taking a big swing, it's about understanding the guesses that you're making, the assumptions that you're making, and finding ways to validate those things as inexpensively and as quickly as possible so that you can have greater confidence in your idea and you don't overinvest in something that might not turn out to be a winner. Now, zero to one takes a little bit of a different approach. The core theme in this book is to have a bold vision, to seek to do big things, to step out of your comfort zone, to not just focus on an iterative approach, but rather to take some risks. And Peter Thiel mentions in the book, it's better to risk boldness than triviality. And so in many ways, he's advocating for the style of business where you have a bold vision from the founder or from the founding team. And in many ways, that's kind of the concept behind the title, zero to one. Rather than making an iterative improvement on an existing idea, going from one to two or two to three or three to four, it's about finding ways to go from zero to one, to bring entirely new things into the world that didn't exist previously. Now, in my personal opinion, I don't actually think there is such a huge conflict between these two different approaches. I think in one way, they're speaking to different audiences and different problems, and they're also addressing extremes that can sometimes occur in business. So the lean startup, what I love about the message here is that almost no matter what you're pursuing, there's almost certainly a way to get clear on the assumptions that are underlying your business idea, and it's almost always the best approach to test and validate those ideas before making a massive commitment. That's almost always the case. In some cases, it's very difficult to test things ahead of time, but in most cases, there's no really good reason why you should just take a massive risk for the sake of taking a massive risk. Now, Zero to one, what I love about this book is it's really calling on people to avoid getting stuck in an overly iterative approach. I wanna give you a few examples. You've gotta see how this works because when we look at some of the most successful companies, especially in the tech space, companies like Uber, Google, Amazon, these kinds of businesses, often we have this perception that they are visionary led that right from the beginning, the founders knew exactly what they were building and they simply set out to execute on this bold and ambitious vision. And that doesn't actually turn out to be true when you really dive into the nuts and bolts, but there's a blending of these two approaches. And that's really what I, what I wanna hit on most here. It's kind of taking the best of both worlds and finding how to blend the two ideas into a more effective strategy. So for example, let me quickly dive into a few here. Uber. Uber did indeed have a bold vision, but the bold vision was very different than the Uber we see today. Initially, Uber started out as simply trying to build a premium black car service where you could hail a black car from your smartphone, and it was located in San Francisco, I believe, at the time, and you could use your smartphone to call what was basically a limousine service. And it was only later, well later, and in response to Lyft and their efforts to kind of do more of the crowdsourced driver relationship thing that Uber changed their mission. They changed their strategy and created a much bolder and new innovative uh, approach and really pursued the business model that we see them taking today. But all along the way, they very much applied lean startup methodologies in terms of testing ideas, iterating, trying new things, but it was tied to a bold vision. And it's the two components together that really made it work. Another quick example here would be Google. Early on, in the very early days, Google wasn't this incredible search engine project. It was a research project. And in the early days, they intended to sell the technology to existing search engines. That was their business model at the very beginning. But they still had a bold vision for a better way to organize the world's information, or at least in the early days, to organize and make information more searchable. And so they had a bold vision, but that 
vision iterated over time and they found ways to validate their idea and then they would find ways to scale up their vision when they kind of hit a plateau, so to speak. And it wasn't until way, way later that AdWords came along and more recently their ambitions when it comes to AI and automation and pursuing other interesting avenues. So there are all kinds of examples and I'm not gonna dive into the nuts and bolts, but there are all kinds of examples of how these companies used a blended approach. I wanna give you one more quick example because it's probably most applicable here. Here, given that Peter Thiel was an early investor in Facebook. And in many ways, I think he would suggest that Facebook is an example of a business that went from zero to one, that introduced something entirely new to people. And he famously invested something like $500,000 into the business. I believe he was the first large outside of investor in the business. And of course, he turned that $500,000 investment into over a billion dollars. And so just one of the the very best examples of tech investments that just worked out perfectly. Now, Facebook is another example, in my opinion, of a company that had a very blended approach. They had a bold vision, but you could easily argue that the idea behind Facebook was iterative. There were existing social media networks. They saw the vision of making the connection between real identities as opposed to more of the anonymous approach that MySpace and others were using at the time. So there was some innovation there. They did, in fact, bring an entirely new approach to social networks, but it was also iterative. And as much as they did have a bold vision for the future, that vision evolved and changed dramatically over time. And that story is out there. You can read it in books. You can see it in the famous movie about Facebook. The vision early on was very different than the company is today. So again, I just really want to drill home the idea that in many cases, both of these views together combine to create a more complete picture. So it's not always so clear cut. And oftentimes, the views suggested in one book are actually most important for the kind of person that would naturally be inclined to read the other book. So for example, in some cases, the founder that has a bold vision and has all kinds of amazing, incredible plans that they just wanna dive into, for that kind of leader, a book like The Lean Startup can be the most practical book for them to read because they can fill in their gaps. They can understand that they don't just have to take reckless risks. There are ways to identify the assumptions in their strategy and to validate those assumptions before just over-investing in an idea. And on the other side, if you naturally have, let's say, a very iterative approach. You see other products and services out in the marketplace and you think, I can make a better version of that, a slightly better version, and customers would probably love it. Well, in all likelihood, you probably could benefit from a book like Zero to One that would inspire you to have a bigger and a more ambitious and bold vision for the future where you think not just in terms of slight iteration or slight improvement over existing products and services, but you try to come up with a more ambitious vision. So those are my thoughts when it comes to the differences between The Lean Startup by Eric Reese and Zero to One by Peter Thiel. Let me know in the comment section what you think of all of this. Did I get it right? Do you feel there's still a contradiction here? What are your thoughts? What are your perspectives about these two great books? And if you have another set of books that you think would be interesting to compare, let me know down in the comment section and we might follow up with another episode where we talk about those books. And if you have any other questions or comments about anything that we covered here, let me know down in the comment section and be sure to subscribe and visit rickketner.com. That's where you can go to learn about the very best business books for entrepreneurs.